Uh, this is a tank buster. 100% a tank buster. It's Hazard, and today we're gonna check out the A-10. Welcome, my name is Hazard. We have Todd here. Todd, why don't you tell us about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm Todd Bauman. I'm an A-10 pilot here at Nellis Air Force Base doing operational test. Uh, we're out here with 199, one of our Warthogs. Uh, we fly out both uh, on our own with operational test and training missions, uh, and then also integrating with the rest of the force uh, as we're bringing on new capabilities, uh, future growth for not only our aircraft, but how we all fight together. So. First thing I like to do when I show somebody around is obviously acknowledge we got the mighty uh, GAU 8A Avenger uh, 30 millimeter cannon. It's a seven barrel Gatling gun, uh, and it's obviously the first thing that usually uh, is asked about with the A 10. As we go through, we'll go uh, talk about some of the features, not only of the gun, uh, but how the jet integrates that and then other weapons throughout. So if you take a look here, uh, the gun itself, uh, it's about a seven uh, foot barrel length. The barrels themselves come back into here from uh, this point of the aircraft uh, back to basically behind where the uh, pilot sits is the gun mechanism. So kind of the uh, drive, so electronically controlled, hydraulically driven drive. And then from this point all the way back to the wing route, so a good portion of the aircraft is the ammo drum. So 1150 rounds is what we normally carry. So the amount of energy that you get from a 30 millimeter round Uh, just isn't the same. I think the best demonstration of that is if you take a look at the size of the round itself. It's about, a, it's about 11 and a half inches with the shell, realizing uh, the shell is actually retained in the aircraft, and then the slug out front is what uh, is basically the projectile going towards the enemy. Uh, we carry three different types of ammunition in the A-10. We carry a TP round or target practice, which is what you're seeing here with the blue bands. It's basically a full metal steel jacket. Um, we also carry HEI or high explosive incendiary. Uh, think small grenades. And then we carry armor piercing incendiary, which once again is a little bit famous uh, for the depleted uranium. Uh, that's where the uh, Uranium slug inside the round actually will make contact with the armor and for lack of a better term, bore in and uh, uh, kill tanks. Can you talk about the uranium rounds? Yeah, absolutely. So when the uranium slug inside um, the jacket, so the jacket will actually peel away uh, when it hits the armor, um, the properties of the depleted uranium is that it's actually self-sharpening. So unlike tungsten or other uh, metals that will basically curl up and uh, prevent further penetration, the uranium round uh, uh, due to ablation will actually uh, sharpen to more of a point. So it'll be able to bore into armor a little further. Uh, once it gets to the other side, a couple uh, really beneficial things happen. The main thing is that not only uh, does that jet of uranium get into the uh, cockpit or the crew compartment of the armor, which of course will um, be catastrophic to the inside and the people inside, uh, but it also uh, pushes forward the metal that was in front of it from the armor's own uh, pieces, which then uh, shred uh, into the uh, crew compartment. Uh, there's also a pyrophoric property of depleted uranium when it's like that, and it'll basically um, allow superheating and potentially fires uh, from the inside. And from our recent testing, that's exactly what we saw. Even with a non-fueled um, tank, it will cause uh, a lot of effects inside of there. Looking at the rest of the gun system, it uh, shoots at about 70 rounds per second. So you can imagine in a small area, you know, a lot of grenades going off because you're trying to get effects just on that location. So you guys are straight from the lot. Is we that are. how you see the future of the A-10? 
No, I do not see the future of the A-10 being uh, contingent on how effectively we can get uh, to a position to use the gun. What we're mainly looking at is our ability to carry a large amount of munitions, uh, up to 16,000 pounds uh, across our uh, 10 effective pylons, uh, not only carrying potentially standoff weapons, but uh, smartly using the weapons that we uh, can carry right now. So we got a diversity of uh, missiles, uh, obviously bombs, um, pretty much every version of those to include uh, laser rockets are all uh, what you'd probably be called smart weapons. Uh, the big thing about that is it allows us to uh, precisely target exactly uh, the uh, enemy in a way that we want to affect them without um, affecting other parts of the battlefield. So it's by our choosing. So whether it's a laser rocket that I want to uh, hit a guy on a moto traffic, if you want to call it that, or if it's a uh, laser guided bomb that I need to be precise enough, it affects on that building in the exact way that I need. Uh, all cockpit programmable, all cockpit directed, and then the biggest thing is it's not just us as A-10s out there. You know, we can laze across platforms uh, or handoff targets both from ground parties and other air parties and then also get support from those guys as we need to push in. If it is that we need to use a gun to get a little bit closer, then of course we're obviously prepared to do that. Uh, the A-10 has big uh, high camera wings. Uh, we're very efficient when we fly. We can lose portions of the wing and still be flyable. That's based on having such a large wing generating drift. I've always heard the rule of thumb of you can lose up to 10 feet. Uh, I have not personally heard of anybody losing that much. Uh, but other examples of, you know, that the engines could uh, catch on fire or be destroyed. And it's actually made to burn off before it's going to damage the rest of the internals of the aircraft. Losing half the wing or a, a vertical stabilizer uh, is not preferred, but that will at least get you home. If we lose both hydraulic systems, we can still control um, the aircraft and once again fly at home, maybe land, depending on the situation. Uh, and that makes us much more survivable through manual reversion. This I just want to show, uh, so this is single point refueling, so we can actually rearm, refuel, and even reload the gun with the engines running on a dirt strip, on a dry lake bed, wherever we're at. I heard of a really good uh, proof of concept of all the other, uh, I think it was a couple months ago now, um, where we would take off from here, we'd fly a close air supporter, or, sea, or sorry, not a seat mission, but a SCAR mission. Uh, we'd land at Creech, we'd take off again, put another hack at it, land at a Ford uh, basing ACE concept, so at the dry lake bed itself, we'd take off, we'd land back here. Uh, you know, some logistics to make that test work, but the proof of concept is, as long as you have a, a minimum footprint at the Ford base to affect that fight, we can land there, we can get there, we can take off again to affect the fight for a whole another period of time. How tough is it uh, landing and taking off of a dirt strip? I guess the engines are pretty high up. Yes, uh, so main concerns for most aircraft at a facility like that would be both FOD, so we don't have that issue because once again I'm not worried about rocks kicking up in there. Uh, there's also uh, just the structure of the aircraft. Everything is up very high, so not only can maintainers get to the munitions for reloading and rearming, but also once again uh, you're not worried about uh, problems there. Um, to expand that answer even more though, survivability-wise, if we can't get our gear down because maybe battle damage, the A-10 is actually designed to land with the gear up. So the, the, the wheel will be exposed down here. We have full braking action, even in a contingency like that. Here's a rocket pod, it's not filled right now, uh, but in training and then for operational tests, we can carry anything from unguided rockets, will be marking rockets, and then of course, AGR-20 laser guided rockets. Uh, can you talk about the yeah. AGR-20s? Because that's something that we employed on the Viper. Yeah, absolutely. So the nice thing about the AGR-20 is it's very simple to use, and you can see here we can carry seven of them uh, on a single pylon uh, and on a single pod. Uh, what that allows us to do is, uh, regardless of what type of aircraft is up there, uh, they can uh, acquire a target in their pod um, or their equipment, and they can laser that target specifically, and then we can pistol off a rocket that will go precisely to where that uh, laser's at. We can also guide that ourselves from our own aircraft, or what we call buddy lays, like I said, uh, another aircraft uh, guiding that. And then the nice part too is, uh, that's a great example where uh, maybe an F-35 or somebody else is out there, they find a, a valuable target or uh, the, the target of interest, and then they can easily hand that off to us. We don't always have to be the ones right there at the leading edge every time, but now we offer them the carriage capacity so that the munition itself is on the A-10, and we can carry a lot of them. The F-35 or whoever else, whoever else we're integrating with can then uh, shift back focus uh, to what they need to do, whether it's air-to-air -air or seed or other mission sets, then we can take care of that target, and then once again, we're carrying the munition for them. So uh, it sounds like a lot of force packaging is what you see as kind of the future of the uh, Absolutely. So we always call it fifth gen support, uh, whether that's carrying munitions, uh, accomplishing comm uh, relays for you guys for your own kill chains, um, or just being that loiter effect out there. Uh, this is a munition you're probably familiar with from the F-16. 
but this is an AGM 65 Maverick. Uh, here is a training version of it. So basically the front is real for all, uh, all intents and purposes, but the back is really just a form factor. Uh, this is a tank buster. 100% a tank buster. We have uh, basically camera guided, we have IR guided, and now we have laser guided versions of this. We have seen this be extremely effective. So here's the inside, the Mighty Warthog. One of the big things you'll see is we obviously have a lot of switches. A10 is a single seat aircraft only, so you have to have access to all the switches you might need, whether it's electronics, fuels control, circuit breakers, emergency controls, and of course your normal flight controls and uh, uh, system computer access and, and controls with that. So some of the main things you'll see right in front of you, so the most important things are going to be the most visible to the pilot as they're uh, conducting basically combat operations. So you have two multifunction color displays, which uh, are not just controlled in and of themselves for some systems, but actually go and talk to the weapon stations. They uh, talk to the targeting pod, they talk to the heads up display or HUD up in front of us for um, uh, weapons delivery. It also talks to our navigation computers. Right now, you know, you see these older gauges and it looks antiquated in some respects, but it really isn't. You know, first of all, they're electronically controlled, but also uh, at the end of the day, you know, an A-10 pilot is looking outside. They're looking at the battle space. Uh, this is used for normal flight operations, just like any other aircraft, attitude, heading, SA. Uh, but when we fly the A-10, what we are doing is we are looking outside, trying to find these targets, find friendlies, figure out how to protect them. We actually have a monocle in the A-10 uh, that allows us uh, almost a little bit like a video game, look out on the battle speed space, see where the red guys are, see where the blue guys are, um, and, and see the other uh, digital effects that are being talked about out there, uh, communications wise, and also with our own aircraft systems. So if I see somebody shoot on the ground at friendlies, I can just look at it. I can hit a button inside my cockpit without uh, being distracted. I can bring my targeting pod on over it, uh, and then look inside or find that position. And then I'm in a position to uh, employ my weapons as desired with that. And it makes it very easy in the A-10 with our comm suite to communicate that not only uh, between our systems, between our formation, but other players out there with literally just a touch of a button. I want to thank Todd along with the other members of the 422 Test and Evaluation Squadron for making this happen. I also want to thank Nellis Air Force Base and their public affairs team along with the Defense Innovation Unit. We have the best Air Force in the world because of pilots like Todd who are on the front lines of innovation with technology and tactics and I feel privileged to be able to help tell their story. Check out this video here for a flight in one of their F-16s with some new experimental tech that will help save pilot lives and make them more lethal in the future.